Good evening, I'm your host Kimilia and you're watching Kini News. Najib Abdul Razak could be disqualified as Pekan MP. This is if a petition for pardon is not filed within 14 days. Former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak has an option to file a petition for a pardon with regards to his conviction and prison sentence in the SRC case. This is according to lawyer Niu Sin Yu, who said that it was governed by Act 42 of the Federal Constitution. In a post on Twitter, he said Najib must file the petition within 14 days or he will lose his status as MP. He said Najib's status as Pekan MP remains intact for at least the next 14 days. If there is no petition for pardon within the 14 days, then he will be disqualified. Sin Yu added that if Najib applies for pardon, then he will remain as an MP until and unless the pardon is denied. He said if Najib is successful in his petition for a pardon, his imprisonment and fine could be reduced or suspended entirely. However, this power can only be exercised by the Yang Dipertuan Agong having consulted or been recommended by the Pardons Board. Sin Yu said the Pardons Board comprised the Attorney General, the Federal Territories Minister, and three other members appointed by the Agong who presides over the Board. He added that there is no time limit to decide on a petition for pardon and there is no limit to the number of times one can file a petition for pardon. Speculation regarding a pardon for Najib had been circulating since the start of his case. Today, a group of Najib's supporters sent a memorandum to Istana Negara requesting for a royal pardon. Around 300 of Najib Abdul Razak's supporters gathered in front of Istana Negara in Kuala Lumpur today to hand a memorandum to the young Dipertuan Agong Sultan Abdullah Sultan Ahmad Shah. The memorandum was to request for the king to grant a royal pardon to Najib. This comes after the federal court yesterday upheld the High Court's verdict, which found Najib guilty in the SRC international case. Pertupuhan Jalinan Perpaduan Negara Malaysia President Syed Muhammad Imran Syed Abdul Aziz said their memorandum today has several other requests aside from the royal pardon. Yang pertama, pengampunan diraja serta merta ke atas yang amat berhormat, yang berhormat Datuk Seri Najib bin Tun Haji Abdul Razak. Itu yang pertama. Yang kedua, kami mohon menitah Ketua Peguam Negara, Ketua Pesuruhjaya Suruhanjaya Pencegahan Rasuah Malaysia, Tan Sri Azam Baki dan Pengarah Pesuruhjaya Pencegahan Pengubahan Wang Haram, AMLA, SPRM untuk menghadap baginda yang dipertuan agung mengenai bukti kes konflik of interest yang Arif Hakim Nazlan Ghazali. Meanwhile, Syed Muhammad also urged Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob to expedite the royal pardon process. He said the royal pardon for Najib must be done by the Malaysian government and the Prime Minister must hand over a letter to His Majesty for Najib's pardon. He also called on AMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi to withdraw support from the current federal government in order to trigger the dissolution of parliament. However, there are also those who want Najib to serve the full duration of his sentence. This includes Bersih. Electoral watchdog Brise has launched an online petition requesting the Yang Dipertuan Agong Sultan Abdullah Sultan Ahmad Shah to reject any pardons for former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak. In the petition, Brise appealed to the king to deny any appeal for pardon by Najib for his crime against the Malaysian public. They said Najib has been convicted of stealing public funds in the SRC international case and had been given due process of a fair trial. Bersih added that the Rakya had to suffer the impact of corruption by elected officials who enriched themselves with the nation's wealth instead of using it to develop the country. They said Najib had brought shame to the country and should serve his 12 years in jail and pay the 210 million ringgit fine. This was to serve as an example to any leaders who think they can abuse their position of authority. Meanwhile, Human rights lawyer Edmund Bond has called for the pardon system for convicted prisoners to be reformed. He said the system needs improvement and hoped that the interest in Najib's case will spur the government to look into it. Bond added that the pardon system is flawed and needs much improvement as sometimes it takes years for an application to be considered. He also reminded the government of other prisoners who have been waiting for their pardon applications to be heard. He said that it would be unfair to expedite one man's case just because he was the former prime minister.
Ahmad Zahid Hamidi has described the federal court's decision in the SRC international case as a heart-wrenching moment for AMNO, but vowed that it would not dampen the party's struggle. AMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi has rallied AMNO and called for calm among the party's members. This came following the federal court's decision to uphold Najib's conviction and sentence in the SRC case. In a post on Facebook, he vowed that Najib's fighting spirit would not fade and his incarceration would not dampen Amno's struggle. We believe the dawn will be bright if the night is dark. Time will decide, he said. Zahid described the federal court's decision as a heart-wrenching moment for Amno. However, he said it does not mean that they have given up. He added that Najib is a true warrior and would not relent in his struggle. Zahid also called on party members to continue to stand in solidarity with Najib and to remain together in Najib's good times and bad times. We will be rational and submit to the party's wishes. There should be no treachery amongst us. We know who our friends and foes are, he added. Najib was taken to the Kajang prison to serve his 12-year prison sentence yesterday. He must also pay a fine of 210 million ringgit, failing which he would have to spend another five years behind bars. Speaking of Zahid, the AMNO president is expected to hold a special briefing with party leaders this Saturday. AMNO president Ahmad Zahid Hamidi has summoned party leaders to a special briefing this Saturday. AMNO Secretary General Ahmad Maslan said the briefing will be held at Dewan Merdeka at the World Trade Center Kuala Lumpur at 2 p.m. Ahmad said the briefing will touch on current affairs but did not divulge further details. He added that all AMNO leaders attending the briefing must wear the party's official red attire. In a post on Twitter, he said the official invite will be sent shortly. Two days ago, several AMNO division leaders had answered a call to urgently convene at the party's headquarters. This was a day before former AMNO President Najib Abdul Razak's final SRC appeal. According to reports, the special meeting was called over a matter of utmost urgency concerning the party's future. When met by reporters after the meeting, Sabah AMNO chief Bung Mokhtar Radin only said the meeting had only discussed current affairs. However, a substantial number of division heads were not present at the meeting, including Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob. There has been speculation that the special briefing on Saturday would touch on Najib being sent to the Kajang prison to do time after being found guilty in the SRC international case. An AMNO leader has called on the party to withdraw their poster boy for the 15th general election. AMNO Supreme Council member Puat Zarkashi said AMNO no longer needs a poster boy for the 15th general election. He said having a poster boy could backfire as a living person is easier to get slandered and suggested for the party to use the BN logo instead. He added that it was better to make the BN logo their poster boy as a non-living object is hard to slander and the BN logo is well known to the rakyat. Puat said that despite the poster boy have been decided, since it has now become a liability, they should just forget about it. He added that AMNO and BN cannot have a poster boy who is vain and weak. Puat's statement came less than 24 hours after former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak was sent to prison. While Puat did not name anyone, he appears to be targeting Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob. In April, Ismail Sabri was named as AMNO's prime ministerial candidate for GE15, making him the party's poster boy for the polls. Malaysia Kini has reached out to Puat for clarification on his statement. Ex-AMNO member Khairuddin Abu Hassan has won a lawsuit over his 62-day detention by the authorities. Khairuddin Abu Hassan has been awarded 300,000 ringgit in damages over his 62-day detention by authorities in 2015. Khairuddin had filed a suit against the government for wrongful detention under the Security Offenses Special Measures Act on May 4, 2018. The Kuala Lumpur High Court this morning allowed the wrongful detention civil action by Khairuddin and ordered the government to pay 50,000 in cost. During the proceedings, the judge ruled that the various police reports lodged by Khairuddin did not warrant his arrest for investigation under Section 124C of the Penal Code, which deals with the offence of involvement in activity that is detrimental to parliamentary democracy. 
the judge also ruled that Kairudin's letter detention under SOSMA for 56 days was also unlawful because an offence under Section 124L is not one that warrants detention under SOSMA. In 2015, during the BN administration under Najib Abdul Razak, Khairuddin had made numerous reports in the country and overseas over the losses suffered by 1MDB. He was detained under Section 124C of the Penal Code on September 18, 2015. Upon his release, on September 23rd, Khairuddin was re-arrested under SOSMA and charged under Section 124L of the Act for alleged sabotage of financial institutions. He was acquitted by the Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court of the criminal charge in May 2017. A police report has been lodged against past President Abdul Hadi Awang over his roots of corruption remarks. Federal Territory's DAP Assistant Secretary, Lee Bing Hong, has lodged a police report against past President Abdul Hadi Awang. This was over Hadi's recent statement claiming that non-Muslims and non-Bumiputras make up the bulk of the root of corruption in the country. The report was lodged at around noon today at the Dangwangi District Police Headquarters. Speaking to Malaysia Kini, Lee criticized Hadi for attempting to sow discord amongst multiracial Malaysians. He said, Hadi's statement is very disappointing and must be condemned as it will only create hatred among various races. Hadi had made the controversial remarks in a post on Facebook on August 20th. In his post, Hadi said that if we want to deal with corruption, we must first tackle it from the grassroots. He added that corruption stemmed from those who reaped profits through illegal means and claimed that a majority of them were non-Muslims and non-Bumiputras. Hadi had garnered brickbats over his claim from many quarters, including Transparency International Malaysia, which called for the authorities to take action against him. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to militiakini.com. I'm Camilia. Thanks for watching.